Mr. Deamer, you may make your opening statement. Thank you. Thank you, Your Honor. Attorney's Office. Ladies and gentlemen, you've heard what the state believes the evidence will prove. However, you need to pay close attention to that evidence because the evidence will also be that the collision that we're talking about occurred as a T-bone. Daniel Riley was hit broadside by the Malibu in the left rear of the Audi, rendering him incapable of controlling the vehicle from that point forward. It was from that point forward that that car was lifted off the ground and pushed in the direction of somebody he didn't even know was there. The evidence will be that he did not know that anyone was even hurt for a very long time because he did not know what had happened. In fact, he stated to one of the officers there at the scene that he had blacked out. But let's go back to what happened. Daniel left, coming out of an alley. He came to an intersection that was remarkably bad visibility in every direction. There was a yield sign. He went through the yield sign, and out of the blue, he got hit. He didn't know that car was there. He didn't want to wreck an Audi. He got hit broadside. That car was no longer in his control. You will see from the evidence that there was one scuff mark from the tires of the Audi. The Malibu hit the Audi with such force as to make it leave the ground. The interesting part about that is, in no report anywhere, when Elizabeth Smith, the driver of the Malibu, has been interviewed, it was never on a body camera. At no point did any officer record the speed of Elizabeth Smith. She never told Officer Chapo. She never told Officer Moran. She never told Officer Moore how fast she was going. The evidence will be there were no skid marks behind that Malibu. That Malibu hit it with full force. And again, enough force to lift the Audi off the ground. The tragedy is, and we do concede, that there was severe, more than severe, injury to Janae. And it is exactly that that set this case in motion. The officers had emotion at the scene. Sergeant Marks will have to admit that he said, oh, this just makes me sick. I can't deal with this. It was shocking to see body parts on the ground. And so their focus became and to that extent, there was a fellow at the time, Officer Stein, who, when he was standing there with Sergeant Marks, said, he's going to jail tonight. We were, whatever we have to do, DUI, he is going to jail tonight. At that point, Officer Stein had spoken with one witness. That was Janae's father. Janae's father told him that he was barreling down the road. Officer Stein continued to repeat throughout his investigation that he was doing 60 miles an hour, that people, everybody, was saying he was doing 60 miles an hour. Except that wasn't true at the time he was saying it. He was saying it because that's what he wanted to believe. That's what he hoped this case would be. Because they wanted to put it on Daniel. He kept saying, well, there's no way your car can end up that far down the road. You know, in 13 years of my experience, it just doesn't happen that way. He doesn't know the coefficient of friction regarding a car sliding on its hood as opposed to a car sliding on its tires. Maybe a car on its tires doesn't go as far. It doesn't make any difference to him. He's got Daniel in his sights. That's his case. They're going to pursue that from that point forward. Even after they have been at the scene for some time, and finally there is a witness that comes forward and gives a statement, has given it to several different officers that Stein was never aware of, okay? 
He comes back having looked at the scene, knowing there's no skid marks, knowing there's no evidence other than Daniel was broadsided. Broadsided is what Daniel told him. I got T-boned. Talks to this other witness, and that other witness says, you know, he hit that white car in the front right. He hit it in the front right. Not that the white car hit the Audi and T-boned it. He hit it in the front right. So even after looking at all the evidence, knowing that Daniel said it was a T-bone, viewing the car, he took that statement, and when he regurgitated it to Bridget Forney later, he said it was a tip-to-tip -tip accident. So now what you've got is they've got to fix it. So what do they do? They've got a witness that says it's tip-to-tip. -tip, it's no longer a T-bone. They hire some accident reconstruction guys that go in there and they try and piece this thing back together. And they look at the evidence, okay, and they determine based upon what they have that the car had to be going this fast. Well, they kind of sort of chose the numbers and they kind of sort of made it fit. And Travis Jones is going to tell you that a lot of what they did, okay, was made to fit the way they thought it happened, that Daniel had to be going at speed. But again, let's look back as to what information they were working on. A speed by the Malibu at the time? Mm, not so much because they never said it in any report. So they got it off this box. <laughs> So the information, the statements made by Elizabeth Smith, made by Micaiah Gorman, okay? Where is to no speed in particular? They never stated to Officer Chapo, Officer Moore, Moran, a speed that they were going. They got that information from the box. They got that information so that it fit. However, it doesn't make sense. And the reason it doesn't make sense is because the evidence is the Audi was on one wheel when Daniel had been hit. And there's a scuff mark of one tire before Daniel, not in control of that vehicle any longer, ran into Janae and crushed her against that car. Again, causing serious physical injury, absolutely. And Daniel gets out of the car, he is blacked out, he tells an officer he is blacked out. He still does not know what happened. Even when Forney tells him that there was a woman down there that was not in the car, he's like, what do you, what do you mean? He's confused, huh? What? He still doesn't understand that she was on the street. He still does not know that it was his car that hit her. So to say that he's disinterested in it, is a little bit disingenuous. He did not know what had happened. He did not know from the moment that he got T-boned what happened after that. 
again, you're going to make a, a decision about what you want to believe about the scientific evidence. But the problem is, Daniel isn't charged with using a dangerous instrument for hurting Elizabeth. He's not charged with hurting Micaiah Gorman for using a dangerous instrument. Somehow, after the collision, it became a dangerous instrument when Daniel no longer had control. Because he's charged with the dangerous instrument in causing the injuries to Janae, not in what happened in the original accident. So in the end of this case, we're going to ask you to return verdicts of not guilty for recklessly causing serious physical injury to Janae and armed criminal action. Thank you.